Good morning and welcome to my second little video of sewing chit chat and a little bit of crochet. Um, I'm Sally Ann Harrison. I'm a quilter based in the UK in Bristol. Um, this is only the second video that I've made, <laughs> um, but I'm going to give you a little insight into my sewing and crochet world. You can find me on Facebook as Sally Ann Harrison Quilter and you can also find me on the web as sallyannquilts.com. Okay, so first of all, I wanted to thank people that subscribed on the back of the, the video that, that I did a couple of weeks ago now. Um, absolutely amazing. So many, nearly a hundred people subscribed and nearly a thousand people watched it. So totally stunned and thank you so much for all your support. Anyway, what we're gonna talk about today. Today, I'm gonna to talk about making um, fabric journals. I'm also going to talk about a couple of little patterns I've got in the pipeline, um, some wool applique and also a bit of Tunisian crochet. So yeah, let's crack on. Okay, so the first thing I've got to show you is a sewing journal that I made probably about a week ago now. So this is the first one. If you can... So... This is actually, um, I've, I've never really worked in mixed media before, so it's been a whole voyage of discovery for me. But this is a, a photograph downloaded from a company called The Vintage Workshop, and you can actually download it onto fabric paper that you put through an ordinary home printer. Sorry, you can't see me now. Uh, there you go. So I had that for, for ages and I was looking for the, the ultimate pro project for it and decided this was probably it. There's a folded flower and vintage buttons, a couple of selvages down the bottom and some pom-pom trim. I'm afraid this has been a bit addictive this week. Um, and then you turn it over to the back. Um, and there you've got some fabric. I think this is Flea Market Mix by Kath Holden. A little log cabin block. Some more Flea Market Mix. So I'm actually building these things based on like a, like a, a little flat quilt, basically. I'm The books I'm putting inside are A5. And I am cutting my pieces to cover the book 10 by 15. I'm then adding all the applique and embellishments, quilting it on a Sashko machine, and then cutting it to fit the book. My books actually came out to be um, eight and three eighths this way, and 12 and three quarters that way. So that was number one. That number one got me hooked. It's a great way to use up blocks that you have from, um, previous workshops and this is something that I made in a free motion embroidery class can you see go okay. um, at cowslip workshops so I used that one up and you can clearly see the the sashko machine stitching in that one and the pom-pom trim and then this is the back so this is like a little lace mat and this comes from a, this is a fabric which looks like a postage stamp which I thought was quite fun and then a little poem that I've clipped in there as well. This one's slightly different because it's got an elastic piece to actually open and close the book. So it comes like this. That was my husband's suggestion. He's an engineer, so yeah, that was his idea. That's that one. Then I moved away a little bit from the pom-pom trim. It was getting a little bit obsessive. Um, and I generated this one. So this is all Liberty Fabrics. This is Liberty Tana Lawn. Um, yeah. I'm a big, I mean, who isn't a big Liberty Fabric fan? 
so again I use that photographic paper through my printer and downloaded a couple I think they're meant to be rose seed packet exteriors so they look vintage and in this one also for the first time I've used a piece of um, this is a genuine cardboard piece of a cardboard wrapped with threads wrapped around it so it's a genuine vintage piece then on the back again I've used a little bit of cardboard there we go and some linen down the spine and then some of those little pearly sort of type stick on buttons that you can buy to complete the sort of vintage look. If I open it up and see the inside, the inside would look like this. So yes, that was number three. Again, on the vintage side, I told you it was addictive. <laughs> Um, this is an old vintage linen. Um, I've just cut it. Actually, it was, I think it's what you would call a scarf, a table scarf or a table runner. It had a basket at each end. So I've got two of these. I've only made one of them so far into this. So this is vintage 1930s embroidery um, and a vintage button and a little bit of vintage rickrack. And then on the spine, there's some lace that I retrieved from an old lampshade. And on the back, you've got some feed sack fabrics. So again, this would be sort of 1920s, 30s, probably. And my friend, um, Michelle May, she sent me these from the States. She bought them at an antique fair. So they're genuine feed sacks. And you actually buy them with the holes... You can start actually see the holes in the fabric along the top so you can see how they've been cut into squares from the feed sacks which were used at the time to deliver feed sorry feed and grain and flour and people were making quilts and clothes from them so yeah so there's a little patchwork of that incorporated in this and this would be the the inside so. Okay, last one. So this one is one I've probably only made two days ago. So I've got, and again, this is a an image printed through the computer from the vintage workshop that I've had hanging around for ages. Um, so I've set it in the middle of an antique lace mat and I've added you know, a little bit of pom-pom trim, but not as severe as the others. <laughs> a little bit of the pom-pom trim and some, I've sewn in some pearls around here. And I also printed out a little poem again onto that lovely photographic paper. I've, it's going to come out backwards probably for you, but it does say five little ducks went swimming one day. So you can probably guess the rest of the poem. And there's the back. And the back, I actually found some hexagons that I pieced ages ago um, and decided I liked the yellow because it played with the yellow on the front with the little duck. So I've cut it in half and I've incorporated it in the back, which, quite, which worked out quite well. And then in the top is a piece of vintage velvet And I've used a sashko um, to quilt through that and it's created a, a really interesting texture. This one makes me think of, of little boys christening gifts. You know, it would make a lovely christening gift. You could put your baby's band in there, that sort of thing. Um, I don't know, a couple of photos, perhaps hand prints. Yeah, it makes me think of christenings. I don't know why. So yes, very addictive 
great way if you want to use up your odd blocks or odd little hexy you know flowers or something like that perfect way of using that up playing with buttons and also it's, it's very developmental because you get to play with color on a very small scale project and you learn you begin to learn what works what fits what doesn't so interesting I, I really loved making every single one um, I am going to upload one or two perhaps to my website later this week okay moving on I promised you will applique so last week I launched this pattern which is a pattern to make a wool applique pincushion caddy I mean who doesn't know where to put those clips so it's full at the moment with some wonder clips in the middle um, and that's the idea the idea is that you put pins in the outside edge and you put your wonder clips in the middle you just remove that because mine are actually in a glass jar can you see and the glass jar is from a goo pudding. Now, I'd like to say that I was clever enough to make this to fit the glass jar, but it was a lucky find. It was my husband who ran out to the kitchen, came back in and said, will this fit in the middle of your, your pin cushion? And it miraculously fits perfectly. So that's where it came from. It came from goo puddings, it's GU. Um, and they come in like little packs of two if you're in the UK. In the US, you probably need to go to a supermarket like Harris Teeter or Publix. It's got a European section and they would have something similar, I would think. Okay, so let's do a little bit more of a close-up of the pin cushion. So this is a wool applique pin cushion. So I've made mine out of felted wool. You could make it out of wool felt, you could probably make it out of linen or some sort of stabilised cotton, but you would need to have some sort of cotton, well I use a cotton stabiliser but you could use a bilene stabiliser, like an interfacing to reinforce your fabric. So I've got a cotton stabiliser behind my felted wool here to support the stitching and in the centre as well. So I've made like a Christmas wreath and inset it in the top. I'm, I've, I'm, listen, I'm mad about Valdani threads. I've used Valdani threads on this and a size 22 inch needle if anyone was interested in that little tidbit of information. Stitches I've used are, I've used a colonial knot. I don't know how close I can get this to the camera a colonial knot, um, a cross stitch, a, um, a blanket stitch around the edges of the pieces, a back stitch and a sort of like a threaded back stitch. And when you buy one of these little patterns from me, you actually um, are eligible to join the club. So I've got an online Facebook club for everyone that purchases a pattern and in there are hints and tips and support and we also share our makes. So for this particular project in there I have videos of all the stitches, the blanket stitch, the cross stitch, um, the colonial knots, they're all in the group, just a little video clip so that people that are new to wool applique can see the stitches up close. So you could actually not have the base in. So here's the back. You don't need to have the base in this. You could omit it and just use it as a hanging wreath like that, um, which I've attached. I've got some vintage lace through the top, round the seam on mine. So you could hang it like that and not have the base in. It's entirely up to you. And people have started making these and one of the things that they've done is not make it Christmassy. So they've made it with what I would call more of a meadow looking wreath with um, like mauve flowers and leaves. And it looks truly stunning, absolutely stunning. You don't, which just proves, you know, 
take this pattern and use it as a springboard and make it your own. I mean, that's the exciting thing. That's the exciting thing, particularly for me as a designer, to see what people make from my pattern. You know, don't feel that you have to follow everything I say to the letter. You know, go off sideways and, and make it your own. So, that's the pattern for that one. Okay. Just because I touched a little on the wool applique side of things, I just wanted to show you another wool applique project. So this is not my own, this is something that I've been working on, but just gives you some idea, because I do love wool applique. I, I don't know whether I've got it close enough to the camera, too close. So this is the Summer Crazy Table Mat from Primitive Gatherings in the USA wonderful designer called Lisa Bongin. Um, there's a whole range, there's a summer, there's a winter, there's an autumn. This is the summer version and you can see that I've started to applique the pieces on, on part way through the project. Let's pop that one there. I also wanted to show you the Valdani and talk a little bit about that. So these are the threads that I'm using. I've used in the mats and I've also used in the pin cushion. They are Perlay 12 threads. Now Valdani are actually based in Canada, but the thread I think comes from Romania. They're variegated cotton threads. Um, they're colour fast and they are beautiful, absolutely beautiful to sew with. I don't know if you can see the colours up close. Can you see the degree of variegation? Absolutely gorgeous. So Valdani make these in size 12 and they also do a three stranded as well, which is useful. Um, and I use both of these also in some punch needle work that I do. Uh, perhaps in another video, I'll show you some punch needle in action, but I'll have to try and set up the camera so that I'm able to do a demonstration and then flip back to me, which is a bit behind me. <laughs> Okay, so let's follow down these threads. The other thing I promised to talk about, and people might have tuned in specifically for this, is to talk about my new pattern, which is for this, well, I'm gonna call it a cherry sewing tub. So this is the little sewing tub I took on the TV on August the 18th, when I was on Sewing Street TV. Lots of people spotted it, messaged me after the show and said, oh, is there a pattern for it? Where's the pattern? And so I've gone away and I've, this week I've been working on writing up a pattern. Now, as most of you probably know me from Sewing Street TV, I am primarily a patchwork and quilting tutor um, and not so much of a bag maker. One of the things I wanted to specifically do with this is to make it a little bit more rigid. So I've been working on that this week and also get some nicer sort of zips in into it. So I am currently working with, well I've taken advice from, the lovely um, Becky Alexander Frost, who is a fantastic art artist and bag maker. If you've never come across her, do look her up. Anyway, I'm taking a little bit of advice for her, from her and I'm waiting for some new types of stabilizers to come in the mail. And when they come through, I'm gonna see how stiff I can make this because I really wanna make it as stiff as possible so that it supports well whatever you're gonna put inside. Now the unusual thing about this, is you've probably spotted it already, is yes, it is clear vinyl. So it's a clear vinyl applique flower inset into the top of the box so that you can see all the contents in there. Okay, sorry about my clock chiming. And then the sides are patchwork. I mean it's holding pretty well at the moment, I just wanted to make it as, get it as the right sort of product so that I could pop that in the pattern and say I've tested this. I will probably make a complete new box before I put the pattern out on Friday. Yep, totally amazed that, I, that you could 
applique with vinyl. It's been a little bit of a, I think I started off with the, the other pouch that I made where I attached the applique to the front, so the heartstring pouch, which is also on my webpage. Um, that one, you know, yeah, loads of people have made that. And again, like me, they're amazed that you can applique on clear vinyl and get away with it. Um, so that one should go out later this week. Okay, finally, let's move some of these things down. I promised a little bit of chat about crochet. It's fallen on the floor here now. So, this is some Tunisian crochet. The lady's name is Atti, Atti Van, I can't remember her surname, she's the designer. So, give you some idea what it looks like. So this is a blanket. A Tunisian flower blanket. Um, let's hold it for you. Can you see? So this is this is actually created with a sort of join as you go method. So you you make a certain portion of the flower, then you start to join in again the petals against the other petals, if that makes sense. So I've got a couple of, of rows here, which I must admit, I was making flowers in the garden. I was found it relaxing to sit in the garden when it was hot and make a few flowers and join them together. They wouldn't want to be out there today, they'd probably get blown away. <laughs> so the wool that's being used in this is this one stonewashed XL, so it's quite chunky. It's a cotton acrylic. And the flowers themselves, have I lost the, here we go. Just give you a quick idea of how the flowers are made. So the flowers are made using an ordinary crochet hook, an ordinary crochet. So you're gonna do like a magic ring some trebles or USA doubles all the way around and then double the number in the next row around to give yourself a perfect center circle for your flower. And then you swap to the Tunisian hook. So um, Tunisian crochet, I did sort of look it up on Wikipedia because someone said to me, did it come from Tunisia? I'm still not sure. All that I found on Wikipedia was it's also called Afghan crochet. So it's used a lot in making, you know, big blankets and nothing really about the Tunisian side, but it must, must have a link somewhere to the actual, to Tunisia, the country. Anyway, this is a Tunisian crochet hook. Looks like a knitting needle, but with a crochet hook on the end. Since it's a chunky one, this is a size eight millimeter. Now when they came, I bought a whole set of Tunisian crochet hooks from Amazon. They're all about this long, which was far too long for me. I, I don't know if you, if I mentioned in the previous video, I am the world's worst, absolute worst knitter. My knitting is like ah, all over the place and the pins are going. Anybody that comes to the door, I can't stop mid row. I'm like poised. So yeah, not for me. So my husband kindly cut all these down. I think they're all about six inches now, six inches long. Um, and so once you've made your central circle, you're gonna go round the outside edge using the Tunisian method and popping on individual, the individual petals. Perhaps in another video, I'll show you how to do that because I need to be able to flip the video close so that you can see the working of the stitches but that gives you some idea okay so i think i've covered all that i wanted to cover this time so all remains to say is thank you for tuning in once again amazed by the support i've received 
Places you can find me are Facebook, Sally Ann Harrison Quilter, sallyannequilt.com. You can find me on Pinterest, on Instagram as Sally Ann Quilt, I think, and obviously here on YouTube. Do click um, subscribe and hopefully we can go over a few more interesting, stitchy, sewy bits and pieces next time. Thank you.